doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. I see you got a little seven swag going on there. Yeah, yeah. I got it at Hot Topic. I was surprised they even had any merchandise available. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I got to see it. I, I actually got myself a copy or two, too. Um, I love that shirt. I love it. Oh, thank you. I'm pretty happy to have it. I have two, the, two different shirts. One of them has the vigilantes on them, and one of them has you guys. Yeah, yeah, the other one with the boys is really cool, too. Uh, are you uh, Oh, ready? man, my connection is... Say, yeah, say I'm, again? I'm noticing a connection difficulty here. Uh, yeah, it's, you're, you're a little pixelated and, and, and kind of choppy here and there. Like, I can still see you. Me, too. I can still see you, too. So, I got a whole bunch of questions I'm excited to okay. an, uh, ask you. All right. Well, I can hear you. All right. Um, how did you? Yeah, end up yeah, for sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. I I lost you for a second there. <laughs> oh, it's okay. All right. So, how did you end up getting the role of Black Wire in the show? Um, let's see. Okay, so I had actually um, just, uh, I was on vacation with my family, and that's when I got the audition. And it was just around Christmas time, and I was like, okay, well, uh, I'm just going to enjoy this vacation and tape it once I get back. Mm -hmm. And so I taped it a couple days after Christmas, you know, and I sent it in, and, um, it was just this really quick process. You know, I auditioned for, for The Deep earlier, like about a month before. And I don't think they actually saw the tape. It might not have gotten to them. And so when I got it again this time, I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of know it. You know, I had a feel for the material already. And I just, you know, I just practiced it a little bit, sent it through on tape. And then, I don't know, within like five days, they hit me back. They're like, hey, we're interested. Are you good to go? And literally, once I accepted, it was like 24 hours later, I was on the plane to L.A. And we were trying, we were getting all the, like, the base for the suit set up. Like, I was doing a face mask. You know, they are doing measurements. It was, it was really crazy, quick, and unexpected. That's, that's really great. You played the character so well. Uh, what was the audition? When you auditioned for the role, what was it about your take on the character that made the producers like you so much? You know, it's, it's funny because, um, so I auditioned with, with a, a deep role in a, a deep scene and an A-Train scene, right? Yep. And so I knew that Deep and A-Train were already cast. And so what I was trying to do is find a sweet spot in between, like, all right, this character exists, that character exists. So who do I imagine them to be? And how can I be a third character that kind of fits with them, you know? And so on one level, I was trying to play the truth of the scene. So what was A-Train scene about? What was the deep scene about? And on another level, I was trying to create this third person who could actually exist with both of them and fit with both of them. And I was using my body and, and being expressive with my body because I know this black noir wasn't going to talk and, and, and um, he was in a suit so you couldn't see his face. Right. So I really tried to use my body to express how I felt. And um, what was you? Were you a number from your first day on set? Say say again. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what do you remember from your first day on the set? Oh man, my first day. Um, that was a cool day. So it was actually supposed to be like a, a behind the scenes day for me, right? Okay. And. They said, um, all right, so you're going to do some stuff with Seth Rogen, you know, who's going to be there. And you guys are going to do like a little junket press kit. Mm -hmm. And so I asked them to send me, you know, the material, the things we were planning. And I, I, I prepped that out. And um, uh, I remember getting the set and we're, we're setting up, you know, mm -hmm. and 
like I'm talking to some people, then like off, off to the side, Seth comes. So I go, hey, I'm Seth. I'm like, whoa, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting you to be here, or like <laughs> right now. And so we filmed that that funny little behind the scenes thing, and yep. part of it ended up in the show. I think it was episode six or seven. It was in, and that was the day. I'm pretty sure that was the day where uh, A Train ran through Robin. You know, so we, I got to see that and all the special effects and, you know, the, the effects behind it. And it was unreal. <laughs> we had this big, big, like, cannon blasting sound. Um, that, that Or not sound, but blasting air. You know, and it made this huge sound. And yeah. you could just, like, just seeing Jack's face in slow motion as, like, the air just went, like... <laughs> yeah. It was unreal. It was unreal. When I saw that scene for the first time, it took me a minute to realize what had just happened because it happened so fast. (laughs) So I had to go back and watch it again to see what just happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, That was crazy. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. All these scenes on the show are really amazing, especially with the special effects. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it like to work with the cast and the crew? Oh, man. They are amazing. You know, I love them. Um, you know, one of the things that stood out to my to me about this show from the beginning is just the, just the quality, the high quality of the entire process. Like, the, the team is top-notch. Production is top-notch. And the cast, like, everybody is so talented. And they're such good people. You know, we all have fun being around each other. We love being around each other. We enjoy each other. Um, Yeah, you know, on film sets, you often, you know, get the chance to become a family. And we we are, you know. Um, Yeah, I I love them so much. And it was was just so much fun, you know. And it's weird, you know, taking a step back now, because we shot this in 2018, you know. And now, just watching it, when you go back and watch it and it's like, I not only see Huey, I see Jack, you know, and you know, when you, when you say, Oh man, you like, you're, it's like you're watching your friend on, on television yeah. and it's, you see it from a different perspective because at first you just see the characters and then you see the person behind the character and that's even, you know, a little trippy itself, you know, but I, uh, such a good time on this show. I have such a good time with everybody, the production, you know, Eric, you know, everybody at Amazon, at Sony, everybody is, is just just fantastic. Do you have a favorite memory on the set working with the cast? I have too many memories. <laughs> um, I it's it's hard to think of one. You know, um, oh, let me let me let me try and I'll, I'll I'll try and dig up one. I can't I can't say that I have a favorite memory because there's, right. there's just so much. Um, and there's, and then there's, oh, I can't say anything about season two though, but, um, let's see, uh, episode one, episode two, you know, I love it when we are, I love being in the boardroom, you know, when we're, I love when all the soups are together, you yeah. know, cause we all have our kind of like our, our solo missions or our solo things that we do often, but whenever we're around each other together, it's really fun. And what was your inspiration for the portrayal of Black Noir? Oh, it was it was a few things, right? It was like I got in the suit and I'm like, okay, how do I feel, you know, in this suit? What do I, what do I, what does it make me, you know, want to do? And the obvious thing, you know, is, is black noir is, um, you know, scary and menacing and, and and everything like that. But it's like there's still a person, there, right? Mm-hmm. There's still a person underneath that suit. So how does he feel? You know, how does it feel when no one can really see your face? Right. When no one can really hear your voice, you know, yep. and so there, there's a vulnerability there, and there there's ways in which sometimes he kind of feels like a, a fish out of water because yeah he's this deadly assassin, but at the same time he's not as you know adept or comfortable in, in social situations. Mm-hmm. So there's a, a bit of like a, a playfulness to him that I tried to bring out. Yep. So it's kind of like a mix of like Raphael and Michelangelo. You know, you have this, like, tough, badass dude. And then you have this dude who's got, like, a little bit of a playful spirit. And uh, did you read the graphic novels before or after you got the part? I read the graphic novel um, 
after I got the part, for sure. And we had, like, a, a good, like, five months lead-up time before we, we started filming. Mm-hmm. Um, I read it, and I also, like, I glanced at it before. Like, I didn't read, I glanced a little bit, you know, at, at Black Noir, and I, I knew a little bit of his thing. Um, and so, you know, the graphic novel is so big and so long. Yeah. And so I did check it and reference it, but I didn't, I didn't like, I haven't like fully, fully read the whole thing, you know, but I know what happens and I've, you know, I know, I know the big points of the story. Um, I'm going to say something. I was going to say that the graphic novels are so different from the, the show. Um, oh yeah. There's so many differences and yet there are little similarities as well. Yes. What do you th- what did you think about the changes from the graphic novels to the show? I thought they were really well done. You know, I think the thing is Eric is always in dialogue um, with with uh, you know Ennis and and he has a creator's blessing. You know, to take it and do with it what he wants, but also Eric really honors the spirit of the graphic novel. You know, he really thinks of the fans and the truth of the story in the graphic novel and what it's trying to say. And then he takes it and he spins it into something that fits our time, but still gets through all the themes and the messages, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think he he did, he's, he's doing and he's done an incredible job of picking out the right things to bring in and emphasize and even choosing the things that are right to flip around a little. Right. You know, for to make it suitable to our time, I, I think he's he's done an amazing job with that, and um, and yeah, everybody seems to be pretty happy with it. And I'm pr- I'm pretty happy with how Eric is doing the show as well. I thought he did phenomenal, but I haven't th- I didn't read the graphic novel until after I watched the show for the first time, and mm-hmm. when I saw all the similarities and differences, I thought, wow, this is really amazing. I love how he did all this stuff on the show. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 that, it's, it's crazy. It's really crazy. Uh, what do you love most about being in the show? You know, I love being a part of a good story. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that is the most important thing to me in the sense of, like, I've, I've always, always wanted to tell a good story on a high-quality production. Right. And, and the story, to me, is the most important thing. You know, it's like we're creating this new mythology with with our heroes and and with this story. And that's that's my favorite part. That's that I'm a part of such a a, a great story with a fantastic cast. Mm -hmm. You know, it's doing an amazing job. And and, um, and just the quality of the production is just, you know, they just put so much money into it and, and they care about it so much. And they're making everything... You know, as good as it can be. Yeah. You know, so that everybody, the fact, like the fact that everybody who's a part of this is putting their all, in, whether it's from on the production standpoint, from the studio, Amazon or, or Sony, the creative and the writing team, and all the cast. That's that's what I love most is being on a show where everybody in every department, you know, in production included, is um, is giving it their all. And do you have a favorite story uh, from each episode of the season? Like, uh, what part of the show is like your favorite, or what's your least favorite part of the show? I don't. I don't have a least favorite. And favorite, it's it's so it's hard, right? Because it's it's like it's been so long that I've gotten to look at things from so many different angles. So there's so much to love about all these different pieces. You know, I got. I'll give you some moments. Like one of my favorite moments is is deep with the dolphin. Yeah. Right. Like, um, another one is when Butcher is giving the Spice Girl talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? That, I think that, that was, that was amazing. Um, and then, yeah, there's episode three, episode four. There's the plane, the airplane. You know, yeah. I think that's, that's when things really shift. That's the thing. I really... agree with you. I thought that moment was so crazy. Just because Homelander accidentally destroyed the uh, console to the plane. He mm-hmm. just left everyone to die and saved himself and Maeve. I thought that was really crazy. But I've never seen superheroes like this before because I I'm so used to Marvel and DC, but I've never seen anti superheroes. So this yeah. was a bit of a different twist for me. 
and I yeah. I loved it. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm happy about it. And yeah, it's it's crazy because like you know, even in that scene, you know, where Homeland is like when Mavis like just lift the plane up. He's like, How? There's nothing to push off against. And who knows how that would really work in real life, but it's it's an interesting physics question that's never kind of posed in other material. Mm-hmm. Right? And even even, you know, the whole premise of it, like, yeah, A train is hopped up on V, but like when you think about someone who can run faster than the speed of light or sound, like you never think about the rules of control and running through somebody, which which might actually happen in real life. You know, so I love that reality that we've been to. Uh, what can you tell me about the upcoming second season? I read in an article that uh, you're going to have a bigger part on the show. Yeah, Black Noir is, he, he's woven into the story more in season two. And I think that's that's part of the thing. It's like he's a character, he's a slow burn character. Um, man, I can tell you that Aya Cash is phenomenal. She is, she's an amazing person and an amazing actress, and, and she brings this new, unexpected flavor to the show. You know, she packs a lot of punch. Um, I think we're going to see all of the characters grow in different ways, and it goes, we go, we go deeper, you know? We, we, look at, we look at backstory, we look at the psychological motivations of people, um, and so you get a better sense of who these characters are. You know, their humanity and their complexities and their, and their flaws. And, yeah, we, we, we go on a ride and, and, and we make a lot of, um, th- there's a lot of commentary that's, that's relevant to, you know, where we are and where we've been over the last few years. Right. I'm very excited to see uh, you play your character again a lot more than season mm-hmm. one. But I'm yeah. also anxious to see um, the relationship between Homelander and his now new son. Yeah, yeah, isn't that, isn't that really cool? Like I could not believe thing. that, especially since I thought Becca was dead a few episodes before, and to see her alive and well with Homelander's kid with uh, Butcher right there was epic. <laughs> and I, I think that's an interesting thing, because, you know, the graphic novels have been out for so long, yep. and they have such a cult following that, like, it's really easy for, um... For people to, to find out what happens at the end of the, the story in the graphic novels, mm-hmm. right? And so from one perspective, if you're just following that narrative, it's like, well, you know what happens the second you go on Twitter, right? Yep. But by creating that twist and that change, now we're going on this whole new journey and going in a whole new direction and everybody's like at the edge of the seat, like, what's going to happen next, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah, it's really interesting because Homeland, like, like we learned in the end of season yeah. one, you know, he was raised without love. He was raised without a mother. He was raised without a, a real caring father. You know, so what happens? Like, does he get to reclaim a part of his humanity? Does the the less feeling part of him take over? What? How does he juggle being a father? And how does that fulfill something like empty in him versus how the emptiness in him? affects how we actually fathers, you know? It's a really interesting question, and we're really going to get into the psychology and the dynamics of that in the show. Well, I'm so excited for the second season. It's coming out late spring, early summer, right? Um, it's. I can't say the, the, the when it's coming out yet, but it's going to be, it's likely around the time, you know. They're probably trying to follow the same thing. We don't have an official, you know, date just yet, but it's, it's not going to be too, too long. Well, I'm so excited. I pretty much watched season one like five times because I had nothing nice. to do and I loved it so much. It's like watching yeah. the mo- a, a movie you love over and over again. <laughs> yeah, it really is a movie, you know? I remember the first time we watched it, uh, Eric got this like theater for us. and um, I think it was probably in the place where they were making, making the post-production happen, but we watched the first three episodes on the big screen, like on like a movie theater. Yep. screen and it was unreal like I was like I knew everything that was going to happen and I was still on the edge of my seat I was like oh no oh 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 you know and, <laughs> and um uh, yeah I need to watch all the season two like that and you should if you can't it's like I, I really feel like they should like have something where they when people can go back outside again if we have like a special event that we can just like watch it in the theater I think that would be 
Well, I really appreciate your, your time talking to me. I'm so excited that we got to talk. Me too. Me too. I'm really glad we could make this happen. And I want to thank you again for the autographed picture that you sent me a while back. I have it literally right there on the wall. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, and, and you know, I know it took a little while, but thank you for being patient. And I'm, I'm so happy we got to talk. No problem. I understand how busy you are. You were filming the show and you have other projects you're working on. And I, to yeah. I totally understand. And I'm happy to uh, wait as long as I could. <laughs> Oh, thank you. And uh, thank you. I, I'm very really glad that you loved the picture I did for you as well. Yeah, it's so nice. Thank you. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> that was the first time I ever did a boys fan of it, and I wanted it to be special just for you. Thank you. I really like it. I love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, once all this is over, maybe I can send it to you if you like. Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. i love that. Well, yeah, I'll touch base with you at a later time for that, and uh, I'm so glad we got to talk. Me too. Me too. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your day, Nathan. All right. You have a great day too, okay? You too. All right. All See right. you later. Have a good one.